it's been a heck of a week to watch. And even though there are all these bad news headlines that are out there, the markets are doing really well. Uh, NASDAQ up by more than 5%. Is this a turning point? Is this a head fake? Is it just because there's so many people who are out on vacation right now? What do you think? Well, first, you're having a great time. So thank you for making us laugh. It's good on a Friday morning to laugh like this. Um, look, I think it's a combination of a relief rally and lower yields. That's what has been driving it. But the next few days, especially for the NASDAQ and on the back of the SNAP um, results, are going to be absolutely critical. So the next few days are going to be very important in determining what happens next. What do you think of the SNAP news? Is that indicative of much more than just issues at SNAP? Oh, yeah, because the user base increased significantly, and yet their revenues were flat. So right. it suggests that there's something going on in the business that is not generating revenues like it used to. And the question... Is... That... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I think what you just were about to say, I think the question that all of us have is, are we seeing a significant softening in enterprise advertising? Because if we are, then that's going to impact the other names in that space. That's what I was wondering. If they're, if they're citing increased competition, who's, who's the increased competition? They, they also talked about some of the changes they made on their own platform. That's trying to figure out how much of this is self-inflicted, how much of this is the broader advertising market. What's your gut? So I think it's broader. I mean, we're going to get the PMI data today. The PMI data that came out this morning in Europe was awful. Right. Um, there, are, there are signs that the global economy is slowing in a rapid fashion, and central banks are hiking and doing QT into the slowing um, economy. And that just heightens the policy mistake that we're in the middle of with respect to central banks. Is it going to be effective in terms of its intended goals for the, the, these rate hikes going after inflation? You think it'll slow down? Yeah, I think inflation has peaked in the U.S., um, at least for the next three to four months. We've got to see how sticky some elements are. But the problem is not that inflation is going to come down. I mean, that's a really good thing. The problem is that inflation is going to come down with growth probably going into recession. And that's not good news. Hey, Mohammed, the, uh, the next 10 percent in the S&P, and, and no one should ever answer a question like this, but the probability that the next 10 percent takes us up to, it's at 39.98, so it would take us up to over 4,300, 4,400 or so on the S&P. That possibility from here versus going back to the June 16th low uh, of 36.39, what is more likely in your view as far as the next 10 percent? Because I can just tell you, I mean, the consensus, I'd say 90 percent of the people we talk to say the next move is going to be down to the 35, 36 range. And I just get uncomfortable, even though the VIX hasn't hit those extreme levels, it makes me uncomfortable that, that all the experts say we need to go back down and, and maybe make new lows. So, so, Joe, you've got to define a time period here. Are we talking about the next couple of months? Or are we talking by the, by next, the end of the year? The infinity. What, is the, what do we hit first, 4,400 or 3,600? You don't need a time on that. I don't care when it is. Just what's next? Do we do we okay, 4,400? Where would we be? Um, we'll, I agree with the 90% that you've cited. Look, we have played out interest rate risk. We haven't yet played out recession or credit risk, and that's going to impact equities. And we sir, do you ever get bullish uh, during the financial uh, oh, during, the, uh, during the during the pandemic? You never did get bullish. Till we were already all the way back almost. You stayed I too long back, in the bearish. You stayed too long in the bearish back, camp. Go back to CNBC in April, and you'll see that that statement was incorrect, Joe. I, I was there. I got so much Twitter hate mail from challenging you on those things. I can, I can go back and find it, Bahamut. But go ahead. So okay. at this point, you're saying the, you're you're in the ninety percent. Uh, that says that we go back to 3,600 first? I am, because okay. I'm seeing the economy slow, and I think the Fed has no choice but to hit the brakes because it is so late. And the consequences of that is going to be pressure on earnings. Hey, Mohammed, what do you make? We've, you know, we always have these crypto conversations. We've <coughs> seen crypto actually move higher recently. I don't know if you think that's a reflection also of the just the market that's moved Back and forth here, we're up now over 23, 20, basically 2,300, 20, 2,300, 500, basically. Uh, what do you think that says, if it says anything? 
says two things. One, I think it is moving with what has been a relaxation in financial conditions over the last two weeks, and that's helped crypto. But it's saying something else, is that a lot of people think that the second or third, depending on how you count, crypto winter is now behind us, that the damage has been absorbed, that there's been a flushing out, if you like, of excesses, and now we have a better base to go forward. 